I just wanted to make this quick video because I just got done taking my FAA Part 107 drone certification test. I just wanted to do this video while I had some of the stuff from the test uh, fresh in my mind. Hopefully it can help some of you out there that are looking for free resources online. Um, I didn't pay for a course. All I did was watch some videos which I'll link to below um, that are free on YouTube that other creators have posted that'll help you pass the test. And then I also read through the study guide on the FAA website, which definitely, you should probably do that first. Just kind of read through the whole study guide. It's about 80 pages long. Um, oh, well, I guess I'll tell you, I got a 93 on the test. So there's 60 questions, multiple choice. I missed four questions. And I guess I'll just, if you're looking at this video, that's kind of probably what you're looking for first. The things that kind of tripped me up were there was a few confusing sectional chart um, questions. Just kind of look on YouTube for a bunch of sectional chart videos. They were definitely confusing to me. Basically, when you're taking the test, you can do this thing called bookmarking questions and come back to them. And I think I bookmarked like eight or nine. And then I came back and like really thought through them. Some future questions might give you a hint at, um, uh, an answer that you think you might have missed in the past. So definitely do that. They give you two hours to take the test. I finished in an hour and 15 minutes. And that was after going through all the questions and, and everything that was from start to end. So an hour and 15 minutes. But yeah, I'm down here at Prescott. This is an, a nice lake. This is uh, Lake Watson. I'm about to jump in the car and drive back up to Flagstaff, but I was like, a lake? I haven't seen a lake in a long time. It's definitely not something you see in Arizona much. Another one that I remember is humidity. So definitely that one kind of threw me for a loop. I got a little confused about if the humidity is high, does that increase or decrease the performance of the unmanned air aircraft? And I'm pretty sure I put that if it increases, if the humidity increases, it decreases. I'm not sure if that's correct. I'll look that up and put it in this video though. It was $160 to take the test. And if you fail, you do not get your money back. So I really wanted to make sure that I was prepared for it. And I guess I was prepared enough, but you don't have to. There's a lot of businesses that are catering to people that are looking up how to pass this. And I actually considered paying, I think it was like $100 for a course like where they just break it down in videos and that's probably really helpful <clears throat> but it's not necessary i passed it with a 93 i didn't pay for any any courses or anything but if you're looking to get it done fast like i took two weeks to study so i was actually going to take the test last week but i felt like i just wasn't ready i i made it through the study guide but i was like there's a lot of concepts in here that i just don't feel like i'm grasping fully so Definitely take your time studying for this. I don't want anybody out there watching to waste $160 and driving two hours like I had to do to, you know, to get there. So take your time and wait until you're ready. There's a lot of resources online. I'll put as many resources as I can in the description, the ones, the specific things that I used. But what helps is like watching some of these videos more than once and like taking your own notes, like writing down on a piece of paper, just that's how I learn. Like if I'm writing something down, like I don't know what it is in my mind when I'm physically writing it down, I remember it easier, but at least that's how I think I learn. Really excited to start putting some drone footage on this channel. You know, having the FAA part 107 license means I can fly it for money. It means I can upload videos to YouTube and have my YouTube channel monetized. So yeah, the things that tripped me up were a question on the humidity. There was definitely a lot of sectional chart uh, questions. A lot of these questions on the test were just like kind of trick questions. Um, and they word things differently. So just kind of know that going into it and just take your time with each question. Don't, I don't know, don't try to like quickly answer it. Don't, there's, there's two hours to take this test, which is two minutes for each question. So you got plenty of time to sit there and think about it. But at the same time, don't overthink it. There's only three multiple choice questions. So there's usually kind of an obviously incorrect answer. So after you can eliminate that one, there's a 50-50 chance that you'll get it right. I brought my own calculator, but they had their own that they wanted me to use. They don't want you 
Um, it might be not a bad idea to call whatever facility you're gonna go take your test at and just make sure because there was a couple questions that I used a calculator on. I could have done it. They give you a scratch sheet of paper and a pencil to write with. So you could have, I could have done it the multiplication the old school way, but you know, I don't wanna mess up on that and get the answer wrong or something. But what else can I tell you about the test? I don't know, man, don't stress about it. I feel like the last like three days, I really studied hard for it. I wonder if I didn't study so hard, I wonder how I would have done. I think I still probably would have passed, but I don't think I would have got a 93. And I'm glad that I took the extra time to study it like really thoroughly because I do feel like I really know the, the what they want you to know in, in terms of like airspace, safety, and those are the main things. Um, but yeah, and I kind of want to pick up a sectional chart too and just, it's probably not a bad idea to have one on hand for wherever you're going to be flying it locally. So another thing that would have tripped me up had I not known about, about it, but there's two sort of conditions they want you to know about called unstable air versus stable air. And there's basically like four properties for each of those that you should really uh, know beforehand and you kind of just have to memorize them. That's I mean, I don't know why I had trouble memorizing those because it seems almost like they're the opposite of what, I don't know, like unstable air it will have turbulence. I mean, that kind of makes sense, but it'll have showery, showery, I can't say that word, showery precipitation is what they want you to know about it. Stable air, kind of the opposite, but it has smooth air. That's kind of the only thing that it has going for it. Um, but it has poor visibility in stable air. That one, you should definitely just kind of get that one into your brain. I didn't get one of these questions that I was kind of worried about where I thought that they were, I didn't get one on the test, but where they talk about the runway, uh, they give you like runway 13, which would be the runway is taking off towards the Southeast because it's 130 degrees. You add the zero to the second digit. Um, didn't get one of those. And I had like taken a lot of time to like understand that concept. And if the pilot's coming in downwind, what direction? There's a confusing question on the 3DR website, uh, which has the FAA part 107 practice test. There's a confusing question that I took forever. I looked it up all over the place to figure out what, how to figure out how to get the answer to that question. And I didn't get one on the test. So I was kind of, uh, I was kind of annoyed at that, but that's all right. It means I didn't get it wrong, but it's good to know that. Pretty interesting how they number the runways like that and how they're like set up. There's definitely a lot of cool stuff. I, I was kind of excited to learn about this test. It was more than just like, you know, boringly trying to memorize facts. It was actually really fun for me to learn all this stuff about airspace and how planes fly and land and take off, how they communicate. It's a really cool, uh, test. I'm really glad that I did it and really glad that I passed it. But um, yeah, maybe one of these days I'll try to get my pilot's license. Maybe that's on down the road. But yeah, man, I don't know. Hopefully this video was helpful. I'm kind of starting to ramble. Best of luck to you out there on your getting your FAA part 107 license and check out the channel. You know, you can kind of follow along, see what uh, kind of drone vi videos I get up in the air as I get the bird in the sky coming up. So, all right. Thanks for watching. Good luck. We'll see you next time.